Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another one of my videos. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a cheap O2 sensor for your 1990s Mazda Miata. Now if you ever have to replace an O2 sensor, which is something that goes, off, uh, goes bad pretty often in those Miatas, you'll quickly realize that they're really expensive, especially if you have to replace the downstream O2 sensor. Now the difference, very quickly, upstream means before the catalytic converter, downstream means behind the catalytic converter, and usually the downstream goes bad um, because of the uh, rust that happens towards the catalytic converter because it's underneath the car rather than kind of in the engine bay where the upstream tends to live in. And these downstream O2 sensors on these Miatas are insanely expensive. Uh, local AutoZone, $158, $170 at O'Reilly's, really expensive for an O2 sensor, but the upstream is a little bit more cheaper. Um, it's about $85. And if you go online, you can find a nice upstream O2 sensor for 13 bucks, but it's upstream. So now let's talk about how do we convert a upstream to a downstream, but first let's talk about the differences. So guys, here is a upstream, uh, downstream O2 sensor. As you can see, mine kind of broke off. All that rust just kind of finally got to it. Um, the downstream has a rubber grommet, um, a big one right here, and that's because um, it actually connects, the, 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 the place where you connect this O2 sensor at is actually inside of the car. So it goes from the catalytic converter inside of your car. That's why there's this rubber grommet so that water and, and fumes and stuff like that don't get inside the cabin. And then this connects inside of the car. Now the upstream O2 sensor has a different connector, as you can see here, I'll put them right next to each other. And actually, they fit into one another. So you already know, and you can already tell, that they're different. But the O2 sensor on the upstream is just a simple cable with a connector, which you just simply connect in. So what we're gonna do is we're going to be taking this rubber boot off well, that comes with the grommet because we want to make sure we have some sort of insulation and we're going to slide it over the upstream sensor that we bought online of course I'll have a link in the description below and then we're going to cut off the pigtail and solder it on to this pigtail and then we should have a great cheap uh, O2 sensor uh, that'll be fully functional, help us get that better fuel economy and not make us run rich and just dump a bunch of fuel and potentially ruin our catalytic converter. Now, the only tricky part is there are four wires. Um, so you want to make sure that you align them correctly with the type of wires that we're going to be aligning them to. And that's the trickiest part of this entire process. And that's what we're going to tackle next. So, of course, I'm going to have a link in the description of this O2 sensor upstream that I bought online. Now, on the downstream sensor, we can see we have a blue wire, we have a white wire right underneath it, and then we have two black wires on the other side. Okay? Now, on this sensor, the upstream one, we've got two white ones, a black one, and a gray. Okay, so let me see if I can show you that again. So two white, and then on the other side we've got one black one right here, and then a gray one. So here's the color codes. The blue on the downstream is actually the positive. Okay? The positive on the upstream is black. It's the only black one. So we're going to have to match the blue and the black, the blue from the downstream and the black from the upstream. We're going to do those together. Now, the downstream has two black ones. The upstream has two white ones. And those two are also going to go towards each other as well. And the last wire on the uh, downstream is a white, and that's ground for the downstream. For the upstream, the ground is uh, gray. So we're going to have to match the white downstream to the gray upstream. So we're going to cut these off and then we're going to solder them and it should be just the plug and play and then of course replace the rubber boot because we need this grommet. So let's get to it. All right, everybody. So 
I'm a I'm finished with the product. Um, I'll spare you the terrible uh, tape. I did weld everything as, as best as I could. Um, I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, oh, you're gonna get moisture in here and everything. It's gonna be underneath the car. Don't worry, this is not gonna be outside the car. This is actually gonna tuck in inside the car because remember, everything um, in front of this grommet is actually what's outside the car. All of this wiring is inside of the car. Um, so not as much water or anything like that. Plus, uh, I'm going to be reusing the uh, protector that came with the upstream sensor. I cut it in half and I'm just going to wrap it uh, and put it inside of this and just wrap it and then tape it all. But let me show you guys that transition one last time because it's very important. As you can see here, this is the connector for the downstream O2 sensor, right? This is the plug for it. It goes from blue to black. Um, the two white ones, you just have to make sure the one that was next to the blue one and then the one that was on the bottom. Bla black to white, and then black to white, and then the white to gray. Um, you will get confused like I did. I, I went white to white, but that's not the case. White is ground on, ups, on the downstream, and on the upstream, it's gray. So make sure you don't get that confused. So now you can basically put this... Um, cover back on it, uh, tape it all up, that way you can keep the moisture out. Um, as you can see here, I've already got the boot assembled, um, so I'm reusing that boot. It's perfect, the grommet, that'll fit right in. This actually bolts up um, so, so that it doesn't just, the wire doesn't dangle. Um, and then the boot over here, I had just put a little bit of tape so that moisture doesn't get in there um, and everything like that. So this will actually screw in to the, the upstream O2 sensor, will actually screw into the uh, downstream. So let's go do that. So here's the other part of my O2 sensor that I just uh, took out from my cat back. As you can see, it broke off. I think it just over time. You can see it's really burned on the inside. I think that's why it started going bad to begin with. Um, All right, guys. So as you can see, here is the O2 sensor already plugged in um, and the 10 millimeter bolt that kind of holds this assembly up so that the wire doesn't hit this exhaust. Um, I lost the bolt so I put a zip tie through it and um, as you can see the O2 sensor it plugs in into the cabin it actually goes in here and there's where that rubber grommet comes into play um, to insulate it and then it goes inside um, I'll be showing you where it connects to it's actually behind the driver's seat um, to get to this O2 sensor of course you will have to remove the two bolts at the catalytic converter up there you've got one right here and one on the other side they're 14s and then you should be able to drop this down a bit and have enough space to um, take out the um, the O2 sensor. And then at that point, you just spin it on and tighten it as much as you can. I like to put um, some anti-seize on it. That way, the next time you have to take this O2 sensor out, it won't be stuck on and it won't weld itself onto it. So let's go up and see where the O2 sensor plugs into. The driver's seat, um, if you peel this back, um, and then you take the carpet off the floor. It's hard to do with one hand. Um, you will see the wiring harness right here. That's where you connect it in place. It's right, it's right there. And you connect it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Really, after that, you should be able to drive the car. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I was able to save you guys some money. If this video gets posted, that means that I've already tested this out for a week because I'm not going to post this video unless it holds up for a week straight. And if it does, then I'm pretty comfortable posting it online. Um, I was getting an O2 sensor um, that I wasn't getting any connectivity, obviously, because they were in two different pieces. Um, so if I get uh, sensitivity now, and hopefully that'll clear up a couple of cat-related codes that I've got. Um, I'll also be putting some lacquer thinner in there, um, but you have to burn through that pretty quickly and some fuel injector cleaner, and, and that you don't have to burn that quick. Lacquer thinner eats up rubber, that's why you don't like it to be in there for very long. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions about any of the processes that I did, please leave a comment down below and I will respond to it. Thank you for watching.